Hello everyone, this is Andrew again and now I'm going to discuss about internal relay, timers, and counter. Let's start with internal relay. Before we discuss about internal relay, let's discuss input-output ports. Input-output ports, it is the port which is physically accessible by the user. For PLC, these are the input and output ports. For internal relay, it is a PLC ladder command which acts like a normal relay. For a normal relay, we have a coil and contact. For this example, we have a normally open contact. When the coil is energized, the contact will be closed. And we have a normally closed contact. When the coil is energized, the contact will open. And we have a multiple contact. When the coil is energized, normally open will close and normally close will open. It is the same principle with PLC. Like this one, we have X0. We know that X0 is an input address and we know Y0 here is an output address and M0 is an internal relay and this is the coil. Then we have two contacts. We have normally open and we have normally close. Initially X0 is off, M0 is off, Y0 is off, Y1 is on because it is connected to normally close M0 but when we energize X0 M0 will be on and that will make all the contact of M0 to change if M0 is normally open it will close and if M0 is normally close it will open and this will cause Y0 to turn on and Y1 to turn off Okay, then X0 is turn off, that will make M0 to turn off also. And the contact will go back to their normal position. And this one will cause Y0 to turn off and Y1 to turn on. Okay, that's how the internal really works. Let's go to timers. Timer on delay. Timer will be activated if the input signal remain on within the timer set value. We have timer function, T on, which is equivalent to timer on delay. And this one, it is used to give the timer a unique designation. For example, you have 10 timers, you have timer 0, timer 1, timer 2, and etc. And this one, the timer set value. Whatever the value that you will put here, you just need to multiply it by uh, 10 millisecond, and that will be the timer set value. Let's have our example. Initially, x0 is off. T0 is off, Y0 is off, and Y1 is on. Y1 is initially on because it is connected to normally close T0. And as you can see here on our timer, we have timer 0 and we have K100. We have a value of 100 here. K here stands for a constant. We have a value of 100, we will multiply it by 10 millisecond, which will give us a 1000 millisecond or equivalent to 1 second. Let's turn on X0. Then, let's say that this region is 0.5 seconds. 
and another region is uh, 0 0.5 seconds now we already achieve one second which is equivalent to the timer set value it means the timer will be activated and all of the contact of the timer will change if you have normally open it will close and if you have normally close it will open and this one will cause y0 to turn on and y1 to turn off then let's say let's turn off x0 and because of that all the contact of t0 will go back to its normal state and that will cause y0 to turn off and y1 to turn on again based on our status chart as you can see here we have a one second delay before turning on the timer And that's how an on delay works now for this program it is the same as our previous program initially x0 is off t0 is off y0 is off and y1 is on now let's try to turn on x0 we have 0.5 seconds on this region then let's say we immediately turn off x0 even if it didn't achieve one second and because it didn't achieve one second the timer will not turn on then let's turn on x0 again we have 0.5 another 0.5 it is equivalent to one second now the timer will be activated and when we release x0 timer will be deactivated as you can see on our status chart here when we didn't complete the required time the timer will not turn on and as you can see also you need to repeat to fill the required time before the timer will turn on okay let's have timer of delay timer will be deactivated if the input signal remains off within the given timer set value t off for timer of delay and we have the timer number then timer set value which is the same as our t on while ago x0 is initially off t0 is initially off also y0 is initially off y1 is initially on now let's turn on x0 and because this one is a timer of delay it will immediately activated and that will cause y0 to turn on and y1 to turn off now let's release x0 okay then after one second here the timer will be deactivated and that will cause y0 to turn off and y1 to turn on as you can see here the deactivation of the timer delayed by one second because one second is our timer set value let's have this another program which is the same as our previous program for timer of delay x0 is initially off t0 is initially off y0 is initially off and y1 is initially on now let's turn on x0 timer off will immediately activate and that will cause y0 to turn on and y1 to turn off let's try to release x0 then let's say we have a 0.5 seconds region and we turn on x0 again 
without achieving the required time to turn off the timer. Then let's release the X0 again and we have one second already and that will make the timer off to deactivate. As you can see here, we release X0 but the timer is not deactivated because the required time to turn off timer 0 is not yet met. We need 1 second but we only have 0.5 seconds here. Next, we have a retentive timer. Timer will be activated if the total on signal received by the timer is more than or equal to the timer set value. Okay, we have TR for retentive timer. And we have timer number and the timer set value. Let's have our example. X0 is initially off. X1 is initially off. T0 is initially off. Y0 is initially off and Y1 is initially on. Now let's turn on X0 and let's say we have 0.5 seconds here and after 0.5 seconds we release X0. We have 0.5 seconds accumulated. Then let's say we turn on X0 again and we have 0.5 again. timer will be activated because the total time that we have here is one second already. The activation of this timer will cause Y0 to turn on and Y1 to turn off. Now, even if I release X0, the timer will not turn off because it has already one second. The only way to turn off this timer is by pressing X1 and that will trigger the reset for T0 and the timer will turn off and this will cause Y0 to turn off and Y1 to turn on. Okay, that's how the retentive timer works. Counter. Counter will be activated if the receive on event is equivalent to set count. We have the designation and the set count. Let's have our example here. X0 is initially off. X1 is initially off. C0 is initially off. Y0 is initially off. Y1 is initially on. Let's say we turn on X0 and because we have an on event here that will make a uh, first count. Next, turn on X0 again. We have the second count. Then now we have the third count. Then we have the fourth count. We have a requirement of 5 counts here. Then we have the 5th count. And now the counter will be activated because uh, the set count value is equivalent to the count received. And all the contact of counter 0 will change. And this will cause Y0 to turn on and Y1 to turn off. Okay, the counter will not turn off anymore unless the reset button is pressed. By the way, in counters, the interval between the count doesn't matter. 
the only thing that it counts is the on event and that's how the counter works please subscribe to my youtube channel please click the notification bell to notify you for new video please uh like and share my youtube videos and please like my facebook page the gizgon mechatronics engineering skills tips tricks and learning and please click see first on facebook to notify you for new posts and uh thank you again see you next time